Okay, I think we can already start. So we have 25 people. Thank you all for, for joining. Uh, so we had another workshop uh, last week where we went through creating uh, the Rafta and uh, listing the unit and everything. And there were a lot of questions about setting up your accounts. Uh, we did reach out to the landlords from, from that meeting and we helped most of them. With some, we are still working through some uh, issues, but uh, I think we solved most of the issues related to that. If there are any other questions, uh, Georgia posted in chat the community link. You can ask any question you may have uh, there, and we're gonna go through uh, creating your account and how to separate legal entities uh, for, for each Rafta. So, uh, and then later I'm gonna show you an affordability calculator that we have for basically all the agencies in the US. And uh, this is something that we are releasing now. Uh, and you can see like the maximum rent you can get per unit and so on. So let's uh, just go through it. Uh, this is basically the same presentation from uh, last time. After I go through the account setup, I'm gonna show creating the Rafta again, if someone is still not sure how to do that. Um, so this is what Bob AI is. When you go to bob.ai, this is the website you'll see. This is more renter focused where they can see uh, all the units that are listed already. Um, so uh, listing your units, uh, when you list the unit, all the voucher holders will get notified if it's affordable for them. Uh, um, they will receive an email. So that's uh, something that's automatically in the system. Uh, and you can always reach out to them and they can reach out to you. So we are kind of a connection between the landlords and clients in, in this uh, way. Also, renters can create their renter profiles with more details about uh, them. And you can always see this. Uh, and they can see the units uh, on the website. Uh, we will go through renter profiles in much more detail on the next workshop, on workshop three. So you'll see what the renter can put in and how to know what's the best renter for you. Uh, and yeah, they can see uh, all the units on the housing provider page that will be available for you. And that's coming in September. Uh, also, one thing that you may notice when you list the unit, there isn't an option to add a picture. So we are adding option for adding pictures early next week. So uh, from next week, yeah, you should be able to also list the pictures to help to explain the renter what the unit actually is and how it looks so they they know. Uh, as for creating the Rafta, uh, you can select the PHA when you create it. We'll go through this, enter the renter name and create that Rafta. Uh, add information about the unit. You can use it from a previous Rafta or from a new one that you or for a new unit that you are just listing. All the documents can be completed online and documents such as the W9 can be uploaded so that the whole form is complete. And if the PHA, uh, I mentioned to mention that we are working with several PHAs. So if you submit the Rafta through Bob AI, they will see it in their Bob AI portal. And if the Rafta is not the current Bob AI, if the uh, PHA is not the current Bob AI customer, you can download the whole Rafta package as a PDF and send it to them. And inside Bob AI, you'll have a whole listing of like a report of all the rafters that you have in progress or that you already completed. And yeah, this, there, this is no cost for the landlord. Uh, one thing that we recently added is the community. Um, you can join the community now on community.bob.ai or directly through Bob AI when you log in. Uh, Georgia actually sent the link to the community in the chat so you can join their uh, now and our support will help uh, and yeah the video from this workshop that is being recorded will be posted on on that page uh, and yeah this is the housing provider page that's coming early in september so you'll have an option to list all your units all your properties and floor plans and the clients will be able to see uh, more detail about all of them uh, so let me go to Bob AI to show you how it looks. Uh, one more thing that we want to add there is integration to all the housing provider uh, 
if you are using any tool such as a Yardi, Rent Manager, or something similar, or yeah, something like that, um, you will have an option to see it all. Uh, when you start to list the unit or create a raft, we may ask you a question if you're using a tool like that, because we want to make an integration so that you can uh, pull all your units from there automatically without having to list uh, manually. So let me create an account as a housing provider. When you click on create account in the top right corner, you can select if you're a housing assistance provider, a housing provider or a renter. In this case, I'm selecting housing provider uh, because I'm a landlord or a property manager or a realtor. So I'm clicking on continue here. Uh, so now I provide my email and password. Uh, we are saying we strongly suggest using your work email address to create an account. You can link your social media accounts later for logging to using uh, them. So I have this one. Let me create it with this email. And this is the password. Okay, after this, I'm selecting these two options and clicking on continue. Uh, this sent me an email just to verify uh, that I am actually the owner of, of this email address. So I now received an email and I'm going to copy the one-time password and just click here and paste it. Okay, one-time password accepted, I'm in. Uh, so here we're selecting if I'm a realtor, uh, I work with landlords and property managers to help them render units. I work with renters to help them find rental units or a property manager. I'm a property manager responsible for day-to-day -day operations rental units or landlord. I am the owner of rental properties. So let me select property manager because I'm going to show you how to create rafters for different uh, owners, for different uh, um, landlords, uh, because last time I did it as the owner. So, okay, I select property manager. Now here I can select what's my property. If it's already here, I suggest you first type it. It's possible it's already in our system. If you are working with the PHA that we are also working with, uh, if it's not, you can select that you don't see your organization or if you don't have a company, if you are a sole proprietor. So let me just add a new organization here. Okay, um, my address is it's report. Okay, let me continue. Okay, so when you are in, the first thing I suggest is to add the contact information, such as the first and last name. And if you have other uh, people working with you on your account, there is the users in my account option. So click here, you will see yourself. You can see which apps you have and what's your current role. And if you want to invite someone else, you can invite them here, select if they're a member or another property manager. Uh, and yeah, just click on send invitation. So you only need to enter their email address here. Okay, now let me go back to the homepage. I can do that by clicking that back arrow or by clicking on my apps here. Now, one thing that I mentioned is the community. Okay, so this is how you can access community by clicking here. Uh, so we have, yeah, this will now log me in. Again, you can see a lot of uh, topics here. Let's say I'll read it later. Let me refresh. So. You can see a lot of topics here, such as the topic from our previous workshop, and you can see the recording from the workshop here. Uh, 
so this is community again you can get uh, answers to a lot of questions here from other landlords or from our support uh, so i suggest you, you to use it also another way to contact our support is by clicking here uh, so again this is for contacting the bob ai support team for technical issues if you have a question for your pha such as re rescheduling an inspection or something like that uh, you should reach out to them directly but if you have a technical question related to your account or it's something else you can create a ticket so you do it by clicking on create a ticket here and you fill out the short form just what's the reason why you're why you're uh, creating a ticket and just what what the actual issue is uh, so after that our support team will get back to you we we heard that some people are not getting answers from our support that's because uh, the email support at bob ai is not monitored so people are not reviewing that email and uh, answering but we now take these tickets so if you click on create ticket someone will definitely get back to you uh, okay so that's how you create your account again if there are questions uh, write in chat georgia will answer i'll answer later or even better go to community and ask there because that will stay after the call as well uh, okay uh, let me now show you how to create a raft up for different uh, properties now there was also a question about inspections inspection app is something that we're going to go through in a workshop four so for now if you have questions again ask uh, I'm going to send my email, my personal email to chat as well. If you have any questions about setting up the account or something related to that, you can ask me directly. Uh, okay, so manage our FTA. So this is how we create Raftas for one or more uh, legal entities. So I'm here the first time, so I'm going to click on create Rafta. So this is what I mentioned, where we ask you if you are working, what's the software you are using uh, for property management, uh, because we can make an integration to move your units automatically if you want. And those units would be marketed automatically. And what's the chat application that you're using, uh, such as uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack, or something else, you can select it here and submit. Okay, now as for creating the RFTA, here you type the name of the public housing authority that you're creating it for. So I'm going to create it for a test account that we have for test housing authority. Of course, you should not write this, you should write the name of the exact uh, public housing authority, such as uh, Dallas Housing Authority. So just yeah, make sure that you select the correct housing authority here. I know that some users select for example dallas county or something like that and then it doesn't come actually to dha or houston housing authority or shrewport uh, and so on so i'm going to do this as a test so i'll use test housing authority okay i'm using a random name Okay, proceed. So what I just mentioned, please confirm that Test Housing Authority is the correct PHA you're working with. So if you select like Dallas County or something like that, uh, make sure that that's the actual PHA that you want to send this to. Because that will also be automatically populated in the raft and all the other forms. So, you know, that's important to note. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh this is me i'm the housing provider and i'm the property manager but in case i'm the legal entity if, if in case you're the owner you select yourself as the legal entity as the owner of that property if there's another legal entity that owns the property this is where you select that uh, so in this example I have Riverside Apartments. 
and they are the legal entity for this unit. <clears throat> if you search here and you don't find, again, this search has a lot of other uh, housing authorities that are in our system. Now, if you don't see your legal entity, please click here. You can send an email to invite them. You can write their name and uh, invite them. Uh, and when you are creating rafters, you can create for any other uh, legal entity. If you are working with five or 10 legal entities, you can create rafters for all of them. When you upload the document, such as the W9 direct deposit form, only that legal entity that you selected will see that form. So uh, if you are creating it again for the same legal entity, that's even better because the data that you use the first time will be there also, there also on the second time you create the raft. So the whole process of creating the raft online is going to take 10 minutes. And with our data, we're seeing uh, it really takes, for some landlords, it takes 10 minutes to create everything because once you do it the first time, the second time it gets faster. Uh, OK, I hope this part was explained well. If not, we can discuss it again in the community. So let me go through one rafter one more time and yeah, show you how, how long it actually takes. So I can put a monthly rent. Do you allow pets, yes or no? Do you need two references? Do you need the FICO score? And if you're an owner and agent, last time I was an owner, so let me select this time that I'm an agent. What this means, I just have to submit the management agreement when uh, creating the property. Okay, the address of this one that I'm listing. Is 14248 Marsh Lane in Edison, you can see all the other parts are populated automatically if this is a, a multifamily unit. Uh, write the apartment number here. Okay, uh, here you select the structure type. Again, this is different based on the housing authority you work with. Uh, so you can select sometimes an apartment and so on. And uh, why we're really asking for this is because we can automatically calculate the affordability of the raft. Uh, so this, whoever submitted the raft, I think this part is familiar. This is how it also looks in the raft itself. You select the type of uh, heating, cooking, and fuel for uh, water heating. You select if it's being paid by the owner or the tenant. Let's say in this example, the owner uh, is paying for water and sewer and the refrigerator is provided. Okay, so we can move to the next step. So I can save my floor plan here. So the next time that I'm creating a rafta, it's much easier. I don't need to go through all of these that I now went through. I can just select a floor plan uh, and it all gets populated automatically. Okay, now the raft is created. Uh, this is saying we couldn't locate the voucher for mixed tones at the moment. The raft will be still be submitted to uh, TPHA after you sign all the documents, but please may note it may be returned unless the unit passed the affordability test. Again, some PHAs don't allow to proceed if the voucher is not in, uh, and we are aware of that. What we are uh, going to allow uh, now already in September is if the voucher is not in the system, the renter can take a picture of the voucher and upload it or send it to you and you can upload the voucher. So even if the voucher is not in the system yet, you can get a picture of the voucher and uh, add it to the system. And one more thing that can happen is if the name of the voucher is not uh, the same as the head of household name, so the name that you are putting when creating the raft needs to be the same as the name of the head of household. OK, um, this is explaining how to complete the forms. Uh, and after you complete, we send automatically an email to the client asking them to sign. Uh, they cannot edit anything you did. They can just sign and they cannot see uh, the documents such as the direct deposit form, vendor number verification, or, or what you add in the additional documents. So those are your personal uh, documents. Okay, here, first document, acknowledgement of rent responsibility. I'm just gonna sign it. The form is now ready for my signature. Once I sign, it will be locked. Uh, if I need to change something, I would click on the unlock button and the signatures will be removed and I'll sign again. 
Okay. This form is done. I'm saving it. Additional amenities form. We are built. We are footed. Uh, again, we are making one uh, upgrade here. So even the first time when you're completing, we're just going to select everything as no automatically. So you don't need to select every field. You can only change what is needed. This is also coming early September. Uh, but yeah, for here, let's say I have one full bathroom, uh, carpet, fireplace, air conditioning, garbage disposal, dishwasher, microwave, storage room, ceiling fence, handicap, assigned parking, garage and carport, uh, stone doors or windows, playground, with a hookup, washer and dryer, laundry, and so on. So we go through the full uh, document, smoke detector two, carbon monoxide detector two, an example of phone number. Okay, that's signed. Um, now the vendor number verification. So property name. Okay, uh, now if I am the owner, I complete this section. But since I selected the time and agent, this section is mandatory. You can see that if uh, you try to sign, this will tell you, please fill in all the required fields. Uh, and yeah, it also requires this physical address. Okay, so if you try to sign, again, please fill in all the required fields. So is the agent agreement attached? Yes, it is. I will attach it later. I'm going to give just the random numbers here. Uh, and again, what's missing is the agent section. So since I selected the time the agent, I need to fill that in. Okay, now I think I completed everything and I'm gonna sign. And save. So for direct deposit form, there was a question. Uh, if you are already working with the housing authority, why do you need to complete it again? So if it's not provided to Bob AI, if we don't know the direct deposit form, it needs to be entered just one time. So just that one time you need to fill it in. And then every other time when you're submitting the RAFTA, it's already there. So as I'm the first time user here, uh, let me just complete this as well. Of course, you cannot leave things uh, complete like this. So you need to fill everything in. Uh, 
Uh, and again, that's one other advantage uh, because I know that now PHA is sometimes returned to you if something is not complete. Uh, here you have to complete fully or it will not be, uh, or you cannot submit. So we really try to re reduce that number of rafters returns. Signature. Date is today. Okay, perfect. That's the direct deposit form. Now, any other document that you need to submit, uh, note that the PHA that you selected may have their own rules. And if you are submitting to a PHA that's not our user, this is just a default kind of view that we see. So if you know that there is some specific document that they need, you should select it here uh, and upload it. Here I'm uploading the W9. Uh, and I'm also going to upload the management agreement since I am uh, the, the agent. So I need to upload the management agreement uh, that I have with the owner. Uh, that's one thing. And some PHAs, I know for DHA, they still ask you to upload the direct deposit form with the wet signature. So this, this one, even you don't even have to complete fully. But what is mandatory is that you complete uh, that you actually upload it here, direct deposit form with original signature. Again, required for new vendors and landlords. We just need to know um, who that landlord is. So for first time, we ask for it. Okay, since my connection is a bit off, it's taking the time to upload. Move to the next step to see this. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. It's a bit bigger file. Okay, now it's good. And the management agreement as well. It's managing the agreement for rental agents. Okay, it's here. Uh, at, if at any time you need to see the document that you uploaded, you can click here to open. This will download the form and you can see it here. You can open to see what it actually is. Uh, okay, this one is also updating, uploading. We move to the final step. So this is also good. You can see these green check marks, meaning that something is completed. Uh, everything that you selected before, information that we can use is filled in here. Uh, the name of the housing authority, the address and so on. Let me put in the list our date. So I think it can be September 1st. Um, security deposit amount. Date when unit is available say it's Monday, and the inspection will not be created before this uh, date. That's also automatic. This is all selected by you before. So here, check one, the let day pay and the closure does not apply because the property was built on or after 78. Uh, if this is a multifamily and you need to provide some comps, some comparables for this unit to prove that the rent can be paid, this is where you can put them. And some PHA is also asked to put them in the additional documents. Yeah, last step here. And that's it. It's all complete from my side. Okay, I didn't upload the management agreement. The progress is saved, but draft are not completed. So I need to upload it again. Okay. 
Okay, it's here. Downloaded everything I filled in is saved. I just need to sign. And that's it. This draft is now submitted. Uh, a client, if you, that's why it's best if you, uh, actually, it's now going to be submitted. Uh, the client will receive an email asking them to sign. If they are um, an older person or if they are not that good with computers or mobile phones, know that they can do this on the mobile phones as well. And for landlords, this what I was going through is available only on the PC. But in September, we're also going to uh, allow this to be done on mobile. So the whole process you saw now could also be done from the mobile app uh, starting in September. Uh, so this will be sent to mixed tones, but if they have a family member or 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 someone who can help them with this, uh, you can add their first last name and email here, and they will also receive a link to sign the draft form. Okay, this is it. Uh, that is how you create the draft uh, completely. I think it took me around fifteen minutes with explaining everything, going through everything. So I think. It can take you even less, and especially the second time when most of the documents are already there. Uh, if you wanted to create this for a PHA that's not in our system, you click here, download draft a package, and this will download the full package of what we now went through. And the, the next step after the initial uh, the draft is approved is the initial inspection. So once the draft is approved, uh, if the PHA is using Bob AI, their inspection would be. Uh, created automatically. So just to show you the Rafta package, it has everything that you filled in now. So you can download this as a PDF and send to everyone. All the forms are filled in completely, uh, including the Rafta form and anything that you added in the additional documents, such as the W9. Uh, if you need to download the specific page, for example, this Rafta page, if you need if the client is not able to sign, you can click here and download. And this will download only this specific Rafta page already filled in and just waiting to add the, the renter section. So you can send it to them. It's They can input it like this through their uh, PC if they have that option, or if not, they can uh, just print this and sign. Okay, that's the Rafta section. Uh, now let me go through questions. I want to show you also the affordability calculator, uh, but let me go through questions in chat to see if there's something uh, that we need to go through before before we go through this. I missed the first Zoom. Will you be having another one? So. I went through most of the things that we did on the first call. Uh, there is also a link in the community to see the, the whole recording of the first workshop that you can use. Uh, good morning. I get numerous emails inviting me to create an account in Bob AI and they contain relationship code. I already have a Bob AI account. What generates these emails? And uh, do I need to add this relationship code to my existing accounts when these emails come? Uh, well, those emails usually come when you invite someone or someone invites you to their account. Uh, if you can, I think you don't need to enter those relationship codes if your account is already set. And I think, yeah, you probably got an answer from Georgia as well. Uh, no, you do not have to add the code to your account. Can't create the ticket and forward one of these emails to me. Yeah, perfect, Georgia. So if you can create a ticket or even reach out to me directly to speed that up, uh, We'll go through that and just see why are you getting that. Uh, also, none of my tenants units show under clients and units. How can I rectify this? Uh, this is on us. Uh, we are making an upgrade to clients and units at the moment, so we are not showing them there. But uh, as we just released this option for legal entity, we want to make sure the clients and units are correctly shown. So that app will be available uh, really soon. Uh, I already uh, create my account to Bob AI. How can I add existing units to my account? My tenants can see the inspection list, but I could not see the housing list. Uh, so uh, please first check if you can see the inspections now, 
in the inspections app. So that app is here. There is inspections. There was an issue where some property managers could not see uh, their inspections. So please first go to the inspection dashboard now and see if you can see them. If not, the best way is to click here on contact support, create a ticket, uh, and send the details to us about how, how what is it that you're not seeing, and we can definitely help you for that. Uh, do I need to create a rafter for existing properties? Uh, no, you do not. If the renter is already in uh, and rented to them, you don't need to create a rafter. Rafta means the request for tenancy approval uh, here. So that means we are doing it only for the new uh, renters, so for the new movies. I think there was one more. Uh, is if this is a new property, nobody have moved in yet, is it okay to leave the comparable rent section blank? Uh, yes, it is. In most cases, you can leave it uh, blank. Only if you, if the rent is a bit higher than, than reasonable amount and you already have some other market trends that you are renting for that rent, you can provide them. Uh, again, it's, it's fully fine to, to leave that empty. Note that it just may be returned because of rent reasonableness analysis. Uh, will we be able to ask for rent change in Bob AI? That's a good question. Uh, it's something that we are going to work on soon. Uh, you are not the first to ask about this. So by the, the end of the year, uh, you should be able to also ask for rent change. I'm not saying that as a guarantee, but I know that we have in our roadmap to work on rent adjustments as well. Uh, do we have to upload the three comparison leases while submitting the RFTA? Uh, so again, that depends on the PHA. Some of them uh, request it, some do not. It would usually be written here. Let me open this rafta. Uh, they would usually write it here under the additional documents if it's needed. Again, if you think that the rent is too high compared to some other in the area and you have leases that have that same rent or higher, uh, I suggest that you can, uh, you, you do it uh, here. Uh, we manage four different owners and set up separate Bob AI accounts. Should we set up uh, one Bob AI as the management company and have different entities and owners? So that's a good question. If you set up four different accounts, that's kind of the best option uh until we get the housing provider page launched so uh vince i think i'll reach out to you after the call um uh, to see how we can help fix your account i think what you're doing now works well but yeah we'll definitely uh, be improving that uh, is a house with an attached garage uh, apartment consider a duplex uh I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, maybe if some other landlords has a question to that, they can write in chat. So the question is, is the house with an attached garage apartment considered a duplex? Uh, I do not know. The PHAs will definitely know the answer to that. But again, if any other landlords know the question, uh, they can answer. And this is one of the good questions to put in the community. So I'm sure someone in the community would would have an answer to that so it's it would be even the best option would be if you can uh, ask there direct uh, okay now let me show you one more thing which is the uh, affordability calculator something that we are that is live yet we didn't uh, formally launch it so we have this page pha uh, hub where you can see all the housing assistance providers. So all the public housing authorities in the US, you can find them here. Public housing authorities near you, you can see how many programs, how many vouchers they have. You can see their payment standards, utility allowances, their affordability calculator and jurisdiction map to see which area they cover. Uh, for example, for housing authority of Rosebud, if you click here, it would open their 
payment standard. So let me show you one example I have for Shuport. Okay, so this is the housing authority of Shuport. Uh, these are the programs. These are this is the number of vouchers they have. Here we can see the affordability calculator for them, jurisdiction map, payment standard, utility allowances. So let me click on the affordability calculator. This takes me to their page. Uh, and the pages can be also for some of them uh, accessed through like URL, um, like uh, uh, PHA slash DHA or Bob AI slash PHA slash HHA or Hex for support and so on. Uh, so you can see their page here, some details about them. And uh, contact information for them. Also, uh, this is where you can see their payment standards. So for all the zip codes that they are in charge of, you can see what is the rent that they are paying for each number of bedrooms. Uh, and again, you can see this for each PHA in the country. The same goes for utility allowances. For each of their structure types, we can see what the 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 amount they pay. For example, for air conditioning, this is what they're paying based on number of bedrooms. Bottle gas, they're not covering. But if cooking is electric, this is the price. If cooking is natural gas, this is the price, and so on. You can see it for all, and for you know for all uh, structure types. For this, for this, you can see that for for all of them. Uh, this is a feature that I'm going to talk on some of the upcoming calls. Track my inspector. You can put the unit address and apartment, first name and last name of head of household, and see when the inspector is coming. But that's something uh, coming soon. So this is the affordability calculator that I want to talk about. You can see all the leads that can afford your unit. You can see it here in case you don't want to list your unit. So this would not reach out to any uh, landlord, any uh, sorry, to any renter who can afford it, but you can at least see how many of them and see them in the rental leads uh, here below. Yeah, and these are all the rental leads in Shuport. So if someone here is a landlord that has units in Shuport, these are all the renters that you can uh, reach out to right away. Uh, but for this, I also encourage you to list your unit because if you list it, then the system automatically reaches out to all of the renters that can afford it. The other thing is show me the max rent for a renter. So if you are already in touch with the renter, you know their income, their deductions, uh, and their voucher size, you can see approximately what's the rent amount you can ask for. So let me show you that. I have this uh, unit. This is the unit address. So gross annual income. Uh, if income is a monthly source, multiply it by 12. If weekly source by 52. If hourly multiply hourly rate uh, times hours per week, 52. This is just saying how to count the, the gross annual income. It takes a bit of time for this input field to show just while the system checks where the unit is and the uh, some details about it. So let's give it as an example that the gross annual income for this renter is 10,000 uh, deductions. So these are the deductions that they are getting. So 480 per child under 18 or for full-time students, 18 plus, 12 plus credits uh, or disabled child over 18. If head of household spouse or sole member is 62 plus or disabled, we allow 40 deduction. Other deductions may apply. You can call your PHA to see the details about that. So let's say the deductions for them are 400. Estimated utilities for the selected unit. If you know what will be the cost for enter per month, you can put it in here. If you don't, you can click on calculate this. Let's say if this is a this is a two-bedroom unit. I can click here to calculate. So 
is for Shreveport. These are the options that they have for their uh, allowances. Let's say that this is a flat garden or a high rise apartment. Heating, cooking, let's say is electric. Everything paid by the tenant, just water and sewer paid by the owner and refrigerator is provided. Uh, so you can calculate and save and this will calculate what are the actual utilities for super housing authority and populated in here. So in this case, it would be 59. Uh, okay, the pro proposed rent, let's say 1100 is the proposed rent. And you need also to select the voucher size because uh, it's important. It's not only the unit bedroom size, is the voucher size is smaller than the unit bedroom size then the affordability would be a bit less. So we, you need only also to select that and you can check the affordability. Now this is saying the maximum affordable rent for this unit is 921. And uh, yeah, you can also search for other units on the Explore Rentals app. So uh, what you can do is 921 here. Okay, this is affordable. So these are all the details. As for the utility allowance, we see here why it's 59, what costs, uh, how much. Uh, and yeah, these are all the other details about the, the utility. Again, you can type the address to check if uh, the housing authority is sure for jurisdiction. So this unit that I listed is actually here. So it is inside the jurisdiction of uh, Shreveport Housing Authority. We can try with another one. Kings Highway in Shreveport. So this is here and it's also in the jurisdiction. So this is what you can use also to make sure if you can list the unit for a PHA as I know for some, it gets returned if it's not in the jurisdiction. Uh, so that's the, the page. Also, you can see other housing authorities in Louisiana if you want to list for some of them. Uh, Okay, let me go through uh, chat to see if there are any other questions. Will have contract be sent via Bob AI in the future? So some uh, housing authorities do allow that. Uh, please ask your housing authority. I see Georgia mentioned Dallas. Yeah, they do it. I know some others as well do it. It's in the Rafta. When you go to many Rafta and you open it, uh, the hub contract is there. Now, just some housing authorities do want to use it and some do not. So you can also see hub contract here. Again, you can always fill it in if you want and use this to download and send if they don't allow it. Uh, but yeah, that just depends on the, on the PHA at the moment. One thing I wanted to add, so the raft that I created is here. Right, so I can see when I created it and how it's going. If the PHA uh, approves it, the status here will change to approved later to inspection scheduled. You can see the inspection number here and you'll be able to click on view inspection to, to see the actual inspection. Uh, again, we had one landlord who had a problem with this on the last workshop. So if there is someone else who has a problem with that, uh, please let us know by, by email or in the community. So that is for the hub contract. Where can we find this recording? So yeah, the recording will be in the community. Uh, as Georgia said, within a day or two, uh, once we have it ready, we'll just post it here. So when I click this link. This opens the community. Uh, there is a post here saying this is how you can register for it. So it. I'll just reply later here, and I'm going to send the recording uh, like I did for the previous workshop. Uh, again, recording from the previous workshop is here. Landlord workshop 817. So yeah, you can find it here and watch it. Again, this one will be here in one or two days. Uh, are there any other questions from anyone?
Okay, I'm also going to send my email in chat in case uh, there's something you have. Uh, plus there was one landlord that I told them I'm gonna reach out to. Uh, yeah, Vince, so yeah, we'll definitely do that uh, later today. Uh, Megan, I think you covered everything, thank you. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Okay, uh, anything that you want to see in one of the upcoming workshops. So as I mentioned, we'll be going through renter profile, maybe seeing how we can go through leads. Uh, if there are more account issues, we're gonna go through that and later inspections as well. So is there something that anyone wants to see in one of the workshops? Inspections, okay. Yeah, maybe we can move that up to workshop three if if that's important for others as well. Okay, uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, ooh, how will we, there is one more question. How will we upload the list of a new move-in? Uh, so you would upload it in the additional documents. Let's see if I can show it here. So you would select it from, select uh, from here. Uh, is there an option? Yeah, I see why this option is not showing, but this, there should be an option here. Um, we're gonna fix that today. Uh, it should also say comparable leases. So you will just select that as an option uh, and uh, upload it. That is it. Um, Eric also wants to see list my unit. Okay. Eric, you also have it in the video from the first workshop, but yeah, we can go through it again later. After the inspection uh, is passed, and a tenant is moving. Uh, so this was a question about the leases or something else. Yes, leases. Oh, how will uh, you upload the lease of a new moving? Right, right. I, mi yeah. I missed the question, After sorry. The I thought you were... Okay, okay, you're right. After the inspection in past and tenant is moving, you will upload it also here in the additional documents. Okay, come back to the same place, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, can we use Bob AI to communicate with the people at the authority? Uh, so again, it depends on what the authority is. For some housing authority, you will see a button uh, chat with my case manager, and you can click on that and send a message to them. But not all housing authorities are using that module, so it depends. And one more thing that I forgot to mention, in all the, in main draft, in all the rafters, you have a button, uh, a chat button that you can open. And that's basically a group chat between you the renter and the public housing authority. So public housing authority is not notified that you send the message, but if you're re they're reviewing the raft, they can always open the chat to see the message. And that's it. Okay, again, thank you all for all the questions. Uh, we'll pause this and send the invitation for the next workshops in the coming days. Thank you.